worship you. We give you glory. Hallelujah. Wonderful, merciful Savior, precious Redeemer and friend. According to how God wants us to hear it. My name is Evangelist Bernard Mushiri Kariuki and I'm born again. Um, today, the title of my message is No Compromise. And uh, we're going to read just a few, a few verses from the book of Matthew, chapter 51, verses 9 to verse 11. And I can read The crowds walking in front of Jesus and those walking behind began to shout, Praise to David's son. God bless him who comes in the name of our Lord. Praise God. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was thrown into uproar. Who is he? The people asked. This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in, in Galilee. And the crowds answered. Um, I want us to note that the entry of Jesus Christ into Jerusalem in a period we celebrate as Palm Sunday. It was a time where Jesus Christ was really exalted and was really praised. And uh, this is because Jesus Christ uh, was supposed to be the king who was supposed to redeem the Jews. And now the mentality of the people was that Jesus Christ was supposed to be installed as a king who was supposed to be their deliverer, according to what the scripture of God says. But Jesus Christ was supposed to deliver the entire human race by dying and rising again but the people did not know that so we want to talk about us being uh, being authentic being real and not compromising with sin at any given time jesus Kusa could have very easily been been felt excited and would have actually agreed to the terms of the people and would have agreed to be made a king he could have also agreed to make peace with his enemies and actually continue and be popular amongst the people. But this is not the case with Jesus Christ. If you read the, 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 the rest of the chapter from verse, from, verse, from verse 12, Jesus Christ now entered the temple and he was met with a scene of people doing all manner of activities in the church, in the, in, the, in the synagogue. And this really upset Jesus Christ. Regardless of how the people were saying about him, regardless of how people were praising him, he went to the extreme of taking a whip and whipping all these people. He turned down the tables and he actually chased the people out of the synagogue. We can actually testify that Jesus Christ did not at any given time even though he was popular, even though he was liked, even though some moments earlier he was praised and exalted, Jesus Christ did not compromise with sin. Number one we can note about Jesus Christ is Jesus Christ was very authentic. Because Jesus Christ knew his destiny, he never agreed to compromise. He did not cave in to the desire or to the pressure of the people. Like I said earlier, he could have agreed to make peace with his enemies, he could have agreed to let the people install him as a king. He was very popular. And the scriptures were backing him up. But he did not compromise. He remained authentic because he knew where he was going. It is good to know our destiny and our path. Jesus Christ knew very well that even though these people are praising me, at the end of a couple of days, I will be hanging on that tree. And I will die and I will come back to life for the salvation of these people. Even though it was a hard path to walk through, Jesus Christ knew it and the, and, the, and the grace of God was supposed to be sufficient in his life. Dear brethren, it is very important that in our lives we can be able to overcome sin. It is very important in our lives that we can be able to live a life without compromise. That we may be able to actually reach the point of our destiny. How many times do people praise us and we are not able to deliver the message that we're given? How many times do we sugarcoat the message that we're giving because we do not want 
people to, 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 to have a bad, a, a bad attitude towards us. But Jesus Christ is reminding us today that it does not matter what people think about you, but what God thinks about you. And God has already paid the, the, the debt for our sins, and he wants us to be restored back to him. Jesus cried down on the cross because of our sins. And the book of God records very well in the book of 1 John that if we confess our sins in repentance and trust, that God is very faithful and he will forgive us our sins. And I want us to note that when Jesus Christ was on the cross, there is a moment in time where God turned his face away from him. And Jesus Christ went to the extreme of asking, My father, why have you forsaken me? Because the father's face was so far away turned away from him that he could actually feel all the pain that he was experiencing. I want us to turn away from every manner of sin. I want us to turn away from every manner of evil. We confess our sins and we turn away from it. And when we talk about confess, confessing our sins, we mean that the not identifying the sins that we have, naming them by name and actually confessing them and now turning away from them. Turning away is turning the other way around and leading a new life. And we may say that, oh, I do not sin, but we, there, are, there are some sins that we, do not, that we do not identify as sins. For example, in a marriage, if there are broken marriage vows, that is a sin. That is a commitment that somebody made on the altar before God and before man. So when somebody fails to fulfill the obligations or the duties they are supposed to do in the marriage, then that is a sin. How often do we go to God and tell God, forgive me for I have failed in my marriage. Forgive me because I have not honored my marriage vows. Forgive me because I have emotionally abused my children. Forgive me because I am not there for my wife emotionally. Forgive me because I am not there for my children's emotions. It is a hard time. That by the Spirit of God and the Dango, because of the message that we're talking about, about the Holy Spirit. May the Spirit, may the Spirit of God that lead us to that point of realizing our sins and, and confessing our sins and turning away from these sins and leading a new life. That is what God wants us to do, especially during this time of coronavirus. May we take this time for God to shape us, for God to mold us, and for us to accept to be molded, to be transformed, and to be restored, all for his glory. May this word help you, may it help, help me as well, and may it shape us, may it transform us. Do have a wonderful day. God bless you. See you next time. You are, you are the one that we pray.